Everybody, Jim here. Welcome back for another extra special edition of More Games, uh, where today, just like with the Cowabunga Collection, we are going to take a look at a recently released uh, game collection on the Nintendo Switch. And I say recently, uh, this thing's a couple years old, uh, but as usual, I'm late to the party, but uh, better late than never, as they always say, it's the Capcom Belt Action Collection. Uh, which is also called the Capcom Beat 'em Up Bundle, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, seven classic Capcom arcade beat 'em ups. And uh, if you know anything about me, you know I'm a huge, huge fan of the arcade beat 'em up arcade games in general. So when there's a collection like this that features uh, just a big bunch of uh, arcade games, I'm always, always going to be down for that. So I picked this up recently. I've uh, been having a ton of fun with it, so again, just like the Cowabunga Collection, we're going to take a look at all seven games included in the Belt Action Collection, starting with the one and only Final Fight. So sit back, relax, and get ready to do a lot of punching. Let's get started with the 1989 classic that is Final Fight, which is the first title that will come to most people's minds when they think of a Capcom beat-em-up. It's definitely their most iconic. I don't think it's their first beat-em-up technically, if you count Avengers from 1987 as a beat-em-up, but it's the first game they made in what's broadly thought of as the beat-em-up genre, or as the name of this collection states, a belt action game. And that being the case, Capcom nailed it on their first try, because this became kind of the gold standard for what the genre would be going forward. It's definitely not the first game of its kind. Games like Double Dragon and stuff like that had already been around for a while, but Final Fight was sort of the next evolution of the beat-em-up, I guess. It spawned a lot of imitators. So Sega had Streets of Rage, uh, SNK had Burning Fight, uh, Konami had games like Violent Storm, stuff like that. Even Jalico had Rival Turf, and that whole series they all followed in the wake of Final Fight. Uh, and this is still a fun game to this day. The uh, console ports are all great in their own way, but you can't beat the arcade original with its really big character sprites and lots of enemies coming at you all at once, uh, especially in the later levels. Uh, and two-player co-op action, assuming you actually have someone to play with. Uh, just like any other beat-em-up, this game is uh, a lot tougher when you go it alone. Uh, I know there are techniques you can use to basically cheese the game and mow down uh, all of the enemies and bosses. I've seen people do it in actual arcade settings. Uh, but I have no idea how to do that myself. I just mash the hell out of the punch button. Or I reach just for the nearest knife or lead pipe. Or I spam my super attacks uh, as much as possible. And that's good enough for me. Regardless, uh, still a great game. Still very fun. Uh, with some nice visuals. A great uh, memorable soundtrack. And for me at least, uh, the most memorable cast of characters. Uh, to ever grace a beat-em-up that isn't called uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or The Simpsons, anyway. Uh, truly, Final Fight, it's a classic for a reason, and a great way to kick off an awesome collection.
Next up is probably my favorite game in this collection. And a pretty interesting way to follow up uh, Final Fights, and that is the King of Dragons. Which you have to give Capcom some credit for not just kicking out another Final Fight style game into arcades. And instead taking the awesome routes of blending a beat-em-up with D&D style high fantasy. Which eventually, you know, did result in literal D&D beat-em-ups developed by Capcom. And this is just an aside, but I would have loved to have the D&D games in this collection as well. But I don't know what the licensing issues are around that. So, uh, regardless though, this was the next best thing. This game is so much fun. You have a bunch of different characters to choose from, like a dwarf, an elf, a wizard, you know, all the classic D&D type stuff, and you can level them up over the course of the game, giving them more health and more powerful equipment. And something especially cool is that periodically, you'll be brought back to the character select screen and given the opportunity to pick a different character and they all level up together, so there's no worry about any of them being weak or having crappy equipment uh, if you haven't been using them so much. Also, I mentioned earlier that all of the games included in this collection are better with multiplayer. And that feels especially true here, where you can have three-player co-op, which most of the other games in this collection do. But it seems especially fitting in a D&D style game, where obviously... You always want a party of adventurers questing together. Regardless, uh, this game is still really fun as a single player experience and it features some amazing graphics and sound for the time. I really love the character designs as well as the, the enemies, the bosses, the stages. Uh, it all looks great. So the King of Dragons, another amazing Capcom beat-em-up. And I'm very happy it was included in this collection. It's an awesome game. Next, we have a big tonal shift from King of Dragons to the one and only, not including the SNES port, Captain Commando! And this was especially cool because while I played and enjoyed the Super Famicom version, I'd never actually had the opportunity to try out the arcade game, and just like with any of the other 16-bit ports back in the day, the arcade version is very similar but bigger and better. In pretty much every way, better graphics, arguably better sound, because those SNES games did have some killer sound design. Uh, and the gameplay is still awesome, and again, allows for up to three player co-op. Uh, this is a game that I never really knew about back when it was new, so when the, uh, the character Captain Commando showed up in Marvel vs. Capcom, I had no idea who he was at the time, but in retrospect, these are some really cool characters. Uh, for starters, you have the captain himself, who has uh, kind of a cool superhero persona and some cool weapons built into his kind of like futuristic-y suit. Uh, my favorite being the flamethrower, and then you've got uh, Ninja Commando, awesome in his own right, Mummy Commando and a baby commando. They're all fun to play as, but the captain is the most useful, I think. Uh, you also get a kick-ass variety of weapons, so not just the usual uh, knives and lead pipes. You can get machine guns and uh, rocket launchers and even some ride armor, which is awesome. And there's some deviation from the normal stages with the surfboard type stage, which uh, isn't as good as it is in TMNT, uh, but still pretty cool. Uh, aside from that, just all-around fun gameplay, great graphics, and a pretty good soundtrack, too. Again, had no prior experience with this particular version of Captain Commando, uh, so I'm very happy to have it in this collection. It is still a damn good game.
right, so that's three games down. We still got four games to go, but first we are gonna take a little break. So check this out, we will be right back. And we are back! And we're gonna get to the next four games in this collection uh, in just a minute, but first I did want to mention how cool the bonus materials are in this collection. Uh, they included, for all the games included here, they um, threw in uh, lots of like concept art and like early sketch work for characters and environments and all that kind of stuff for all of the games included, so that's really, really cool. Um, it's nice to go back and just look at some of that like early like concept artwork and uh, just sort of like appreciate all that. And they also included like like advertisements and like more elaborate artwork and stuff that I guess would have been featured on like posters and things like that in arcades. Um, all kinds of cool stuff, even art that would have been on like arcade cabinets and things like that. And it's also really cool that in this collection you can switch between the Japanese and US region. Uh, regardless, I have uh, the Japanese version here, but if I want to, uh, I can still play the US versions of these games uh, just fine. So that's nice. I like that they included that. So you kind of, it's, it's comprehensive. It's everything. You get the Japanese version, you get the US version, because there are alterations made between one and the other, aside from just the language, obviously. And you get all that cool artwork and bonus materials, everything like that. So that's that's so awesome. Just I like the um, the attention to detail there. Uh, like I mentioned when I was talking about King of Dragons, there's some um, games that I would have loved seen included in this collection, in particular the D&D games, or maybe even like Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, something like that. Um, but I guess the, um, the task of getting the licenses again for those games would have just been uh, more trouble and more money, maybe, than they were worth to Capcom, so... Uh, that's too bad, but uh, for what it's worth, we still got something awesome, and we've got four more games to talk about. Uh, so enough of my rambling, let's get back to the games. Welcome to a magnificent journey into the past. This is Medieval Times! Next up, we have the Medieval Brawler, that is Knights of the Round. And this is another great game, another game with three-player co-op and really nice graphics and sound. Classic beat-em-up style gameplay, but for some reason it never left quite the impression on me that the King of Dragons did, as I tend to think of these two games together for some reason. Probably because I played the SNES versions around the same time, and I've always thought of this game as a fantasy sort of D&D &D game, even though it really isn't. Uh, you get three playable characters, those being Arthur, Lancelot, and Percival, and each character plays a little different from the others and has different stats, but as you play through the game you can earn experience points which upgrades your character's weapons and armor, and, and that's pretty cool. Uh, though I don't really know it has much effect, because as you get stronger, new, stronger enemies are also introduced. Uh, so it always kind of evens out. Uh, you don't have access to the cool magic attacks of King of Dragons. And likewise, there are no fantasy creatures to do battle with, but this game plays really well. Uh, pretty much the same controls as any other beat-em-up from around that time. But something kind of cool here is the ability to fight on horseback. It's pretty nifty. Also, I mentioned that the graphics are nice, but I do especially like some of the stage backgrounds. In particular, uh, when you're on like a big battlefield or something like that. And you can see all kinds of soldiers doing battle in the background. That's pretty cool. Uh, other than that, not much else to say about this one. It's a good beat-em-up and welcome addition to the Belt Action Collection. Knights of the Round. Pretty damn cool.
Now we come to a game that I never actually played in a real arcade before, but I have played it uh, on the Sega Saturn quite a lot, and that's Tenchio Kurao 2, a.k.a. Warriors of Fate. And this game probably has the most in common with Knights of the Round, except it takes place in medieval China instead of medieval England. And I suppose the playable characters can be thought of as an equivalent to the Knights of the Round Table. And there's five of them to choose from, which is cool because they all play uniquely from one another, including having their own special attacks and their own unique weapons. And also the game throws a lot of enemies at you all at once. And it's pretty tough if you go it alone, I don't mind saying so. This is another game that allows for three-player co-op which is preferable, but it is still fun as a single-player game. And just like Knights of the Round, you can sometimes make use of a horse, sometimes by taking in enemies, and sometimes by summoning one with a power-up. And the horseback combat is definitely better here. You can charge enemies with your horse and even perform a charging special attack, which is especially useful aside from that this is yet another straightforward and action-packed beat-em-up with a ton of enemies and bosses to beat into a bloody pulp weapons to aid you in combat plenty of health and point power-ups and a fun little button mashing mini game where you and three other playable characters have an eating contest as a display of their manly might plus again very nice visuals including a lot of attention to detail in the backgrounds and an okay soundtrack. Honestly, that's, uh, you know, it's easily the most forgettable thing about this game. Uh, kind of a middle-of-the-road sound design, but regardless, still a very fun beat-em-up. Always great for a playthrough, really. Warriors of Fate, still an awesome game. Power Gear. Next up, the game that I was most excited to play because, believe it or not, I had actually never played it before, and that is Powered Gear, a.k.a. Armored Warriors. Which, I know I said that King of Dragons is my favorite game in this collection, uh, but Powered Gear is neck and neck with it because this game kicks some serious ass on the surface. It's apparent how cool this game is. It's a beat-em-up featuring giant mechs, and that alone would make it worth playing, but there are plenty of additional gameplay features to make it even better. You have a few different mechs to choose from, and they're all unique and fun to play as in their own way, but something especially cool is that as you destroy enemies, they leave parts behind that you can then pick up and add to your own mech, so you can have different arms that allow you to perform various melee attacks like a giant claw or a drill that can wreak havoc on enemies you can pick up tank treads and spider legs and different kinds of ranged weapons like missile launchers and flamethrowers uh, so there's a lot of potential to mix and match all kinds of different parts to your mech and it's a lot of fun trying out all of the different attachments and aside from that uh, this game is just generally really fun. The gameplay is action-packed. Uh, there are some awesome boss battles and even some shooter-style stages, which is a nice change of pace. And there is yet again three-player co-op available. And it has to be said that this game looks and sounds amazing. Uh, the soundtrack is mostly fast-paced, almost heavy metal style music, which is very fitting, you know, heavy metal, mech suits, all that stuff. And the visuals are very detailed and colorful, uh, with some really cool mech designs and some cool character designs as well. 
And uh, just as importantly, uh, lots of explosions. So all things considered, Powered Gear is an awesome game. And I keep saying this, but I'm so happy that it's included in this collection. And I finally got to play it. Highly recommended if you've never tried it before. Finally, to finish off this collection, we have the one and only Battle Circuit. And while this game is pretty cool, it's also the game that I have the least to say about. Uh, it didn't leave a huge impression on me, even though I, I don't really have any complaints about it either. I had honestly never even heard of this game before picking up this collection. And I can kind of see why with other more memorable titles under their belt like Final Fight, and Captain Commando, the Dungeons and Dragons game, stuff like that. It's easy for Battle Circuit to kind of get lost in the shuffle. It's a solid enough beat em up. It gives you six playable characters and four player co op. And something I thought was especially cool is that you can periodically select new special attacks for yourself, and they range from dash attacks to more traditional Street Fighter style moves. And I did appreciate that. Uh, if I had to compare this game to another Capcom beat-em-up, uh, it would have to be Captain Commando. They have a similar gameplay style and both feature uh, a lot of comedic elements, though this game leans way harder into that, almost being kind of a parody beat-em-up in a way. But the graphics are very nice. It's a really colorful game, and I like all the character designs and things like that. The sound design is pretty good too and the gameplay is solid but again after having just played through six of the best beat-em-ups ever made really I just couldn't be blown away uh, by Battle Circuit still a good game but if I had my way uh, we would have gotten Dungeons and Dragons or Cadillacs and Dinosaurs over this uh, but for what it's worth this is still a game that I think is worth playing through and if you're a fan of the genre, you'll probably still really enjoy this game. It's Battle Circuits, and it's pretty cool. No problem. There you go, everybody. That is all seven games included in the Capcom Belt Action Collection, a.k.a. the Beat'em-Up Bundle. And, uh, wow, yeah, totally awesome collection. Really happy I finally picked it up and uh, got to enjoy it because, like I said, I've been a fan of Capcom's arcade games and console games, basically a Capcom fan my whole life. Some of my earliest memories as a child was, like, playing uh, Mega Man with my older brother when I was, like, four years old or something like that. Uh, so I've always been a big Capcom fan, so I would love to see them do more stuff like this. I also picked up the Fighting Collection recently, which has been a lot of fun. But I would love to see just other, you know, just as many Capcom arcade collections as they can muster. I know they've done that in the past. They've released plenty of arcade collections on other consoles. Uh, but these days, I'm kind of a Switch guy, so the more stuff like this they put out, the better. And like I said, probably multiple times, there are other... Capcom beat-em-ups that I would have liked to have seen included here, but for what it's worth, this is like totally worth, I don't know, I picked this up used. Um, I think I spent like maybe like 20 bucks on this, 25 bucks, totally worth it. Every yinny it was uh, worth. And um, yeah, can't say enough good things about this. So if you haven't picked it up already, I would recommend you do, or I'm sure all these games can be played, you know, just digitally somewhere else if you don't, you know, want to pick up a physical copy, but uh, whatever way you can. Uh, the Capcom Belt Action Collection or Beat 'em Up Bundle. It's it's just plain awesome. So that's it for this edition of more games. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know down in the comments what do you think of any of these games. What's your favorite Capcom Beat 'em Up? What's your favorite Capcom arcade game in general? I'd like to know. And until next time, thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you then. Goodbye. <laughs>